Great, good morning and welcome all uh, to the Institute for the Study of War and the release of Iraq Report 12, The Fragmentation of the Sadrist Movement, uh, written by our research director, Marisa Cochran. Uh, I do not need to introduce her to those of you who know her because she has been engaged in so much of ISW's research and writing on the uh, issue of Shia groups, Shia extremist groups, Iranian involvement in Iraq, um, and of course our military operations in uh, Shia and Sunni areas of of Baghdad. And so it is with great pleasure that I turn the floor over to her um, so that she can uh, give you a brief overview of what's contained in this um, magnificent and long report. Um, and then we'll throw the floor open for questions. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks all for coming this morning. Um, like Kim said, I wanted to spend just about 10 to 15 minutes doing a brief overview of the key themes in the report and then we'll turn it over and spend the rest of the time answering any questions. Um, but before I turn to discussing the fragmentation of the movement from late 2006 to the present, I want to spend just a few minutes explaining how the movement got so powerful. Um, what, what were the key factors in that? Uh, and much like the Lebanese Hezbollah model, the Sadrus movement combined three levers of power that it was able to use to achieve its objectives and in certain cases, and in some cases, subvert the Iraqi government. Those three levers were uh, maintaining a militia, uh, the Jaysh al-Mahdi, which rose to prominence in, in 2004 when it led two uprisings in Najaf uh, against coalition forces. In 2005 and 2006, after those uprisings, the Sadrist movement turned to politics and entered the Iraqi political sphere, where after elections, um, provincial in 2005 and national in 06, they were able to garner a large uh, 30 seats in the Iraqi parliament, which gave them a strong political voice in government. And it made them an integral part, particularly one in the formation of the Maliki government in 2006. And they were not only a, uh, not only could they be an obstruction to key legislation, but they were also necessary uh, to maintaining a quorum, particularly at a time when so many parties were out of, uh, out of the country. Uh, and finally, they provided social and religious services to their constituents. And they had a numerically superior constituency, unlike their rival Shia parties, ISKI, the Islamic Supreme Council for Iraq, and the Dawa Party, which perce were perceived by many Shia as exile parties and not representative of the larger Shia population. So those three factors combined, and by 2006, the Sadrists were had uh, reached the apex of their power. They were at the height of their political influence. They were extremely uh, influential in the government. Indeed, Malik, Prime Minister Maliki relied on the Sadrists, not only during the formation of his government when Sadrists backing uh, enabled him to be chosen as Prime Minister, uh, but Maliki also protected the Sadrists. He protected militiamen, uh, particularly against raids by coalition forces. They also had a powerful militia that in 2006, particularly after the Samar Mosque bombing, was engaging in an expansion campaign throughout Baghdad, often violently. So it was, a, it was a formidable military force. And this, again, enhanced the Sadrists' influence, um, both in the government and outside of the government. Um, finally, before I, before I move on to the fragmentation of the movement, I think it's worth noting that in 2006, as the Maliki government was forming, the Iranian uh, Islamic Revolutionary Guards Quds Force also undertook a reorganization of their efforts in Iraq. And this, this will have important effects uh, later on with the fragmentation of the movement. And they reorganized their support for Shia militias under uh, what is commonly referred to as special groups, which they uh, chose Case Ghazali to lead. Ghazali had been a close aide and student of Mohammed Sadeqa Sadr's Muqtada's, Muqtada's father. Uh, he was integral in holding the Sadrist movement together after Sadeqa Sadr's assassination by Saddam in 1999. And he was integral in the early uh, years after the 2003 invasion in running the Sadrist movement. Uh, the special groups network, while it's commonly understood to as, while it's commonly called special groups, both by coalition forces and even by members of JAM themselves who perceive them as a better trained, better equipped, uh, force, they called themselves Asa'ib Ahl al-Haq, or League of, the League of the Righteous. Um, and that 
has many connotations, but one in particular, that they were the, the rightful and righteous heirs of the Solder II movement. So um, I'll refer to them as AAH or special groups, but they're really one and the same thing. Um, so how did, how did the Sadrist movement lose power? Um, I, I mentioned that the height of the movement was in 2006, um, and it was really late November 2006 that analysts can trace the start of the decline. Uh, at that time, the Muqtada Sadr pulled out his uh, ministers from Maliki's cabinet after Maliki had met with President Bush, and Maliki had, did not set a timeline for withdrawal. Once Sadr pulled his ministers out, this uh, prompted Prime Minister Maliki to reconsider uh, his sponsor, his protection of the Sadrists, uh, and he was coming under intense pressure from coalition forces to do so. Uh, in December 2006, Maliki met with members of ISKI, another Shia group, and <coughs> they formed an alliance that I'll refer to as the ISKI Dao Alliance, and that really started the decline of the Sadrists uh, politically and militarily. Uh, since that time, since the time that Maliki pulled back his support, there were three factors that accelerated the fragmentation of the movement. Operations by coalition forces, it, also, it coincided with the beginning of the surge and the increase in, in U.S. forces in Iraq. Uh, internal splits and political maneuvering amongst Iraqi, particularly Shia political parties, namely Iski and Dawa. And then these external pressures exacerbated pre-existing internal f uh, splits within the movement. So these three factors combine to uh, accelerate the fragmentation. Uh, okay, coalition operations. Because Maliki was no longer protecting the Sadras as of December 2006, this enabled coalition forces uh, under the counterinsurgency uh, strategy of the new way forward and also the Baghdad security plan which began in February 2007 to target Sadras, target jam leaders and f for the first time actively in Sadr city where they had been operating as a hub in Baghdad um, as the base of their expansion campaign. Coalition forces were able to disrupt jam's ability to operate. They were able to de deplete jam leadership at a particularly rapid rate and they were able to disrupt their criminal funding networks. All of these things were uh, able to really uh, de deplete the military strength of the movement. Likewise, Muqtada Sadr's departure for Iran in late January, early February 2007 further undermined what control he had of the movement. He was no longer, he was not there, and, and it, this just further diminished his ability to um, reassert his control over different different factions, particularly over militia elements. The arrest of Case Kazali in March 2007 dealt a blow to Iranian-backed efforts, um, and there was a period where it, it disrupted their activity and they reorganized their networks uh, ac uh, under Akram Kabi, who emerged in um, Mar May 2007, roughly, as the leader of special groups AAH. And the uh, the military targeting of the Sadrists culminated in s the spring of 2008 with operations in Basra, in Sadr City, and Al Amra against Shia militias. And this really, w as I said, culminated the military decline of the movement. Uh, Shia political parties, in particular, took advantage of this military, m uh, the military targeting of the movement, and start began to politically marginalize the Sadrists as early as December 2006. The Iski Dawa Alliance was a particular venue to do so. Um, in 2007, the Iraqi security forces took punitive actions, particularly in the southern provinces, uh, against and in response to Sadr's power there. And this was the intra-Shia fighting you saw in, in the summer of 2007 that was particularly evident in Diwaniya, the fighting between uh, JAM forces and Iraqi security forces, some suspected were linked to uh, Iski and, and, and Badr, the Badr, Badr Corps. Um, 